there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me, Cy Pitaway. Today on the show we're going to be doing some pellet accuracy testing uh, and we're going to be using Laura, my fiance's BSA Ultra. The reason I'm going to be doing this is over the last few days I've been reading some posts on the Hunting Life Forum in the Egon section. Where members have been asking what pellets people use in the Ultras to get the tightest and best grooves. Now, I've used this rifle and done some tests already on my own channels in a room on YouTube. Uh, and you've seen me shooting it at 75 metres, hitting targets quite easily. But since then, I've actually had this rifle regulated and it's had a tense regulator fitted. And the person who fitted that was Phil8282 from the Hunting Life Forum. So before we actually go on to talk about what we're going to be doing in the review and how we're going to be doing it and the test, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the rifle. This rifle, like I said, belongs to my fiance Laura Jane and it's got the ambidextrous uh, Italian stock. So Laura being left-handed can shoot it and me being right-handed has no problem shooting it either. On top, I've got the Hawk Night Eye Scope and this is the 4 to 16 times 50 model and it's got the AO and the IR so it's got the illuminated reticle and the adjustable objective lens if needed. On the back of the scope here I've got a camera adapter and I use this for day and night time scope cam shooting depending which camera I fit. On the end of the rifle behind the cover I've got a Virac silencer and this keeps the rifle's report nice and low without making the rifle too long. Underneath I've got a cheap £25 bipod what was bought off eBay about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, because it's made cheap and the metal is only like an aluminium type metal, it's nice and light and it means Laura can carry it around when she's using it and she doesn't have to fit a sling. The rifle itself is a 177 model uh, and it's in a uh, single shot version. And what's actually holding it is a Deben Pro Bench Rest which I just use for displaying the rifle like I have now. It can be used for shooting off, uh, it's got some adjusters here, uh, here and here, but I don't actually uh, use it at all for shooting from, just like I say, for displaying. So, about a week and a half ago I was actually using this with the regulator fitted inside the indoor range at work, uh, and I managed to achieve 70 usable shots, and that was filled from a 230 bar fill. I probably could have had more, but I finished on a nice one hole group, at 27 yards, 25 metres, and that's as far as I tested. Now it's got the regulator fitted, and the regulator is actually here, and I'll do a close-up in a little while so you can see the regulator. Uh, I've been told I can fill it to 250 bar, but I'm just going to keep it nice and safe at 230 bar, and I know that 70 shots is ample for me no matter what I'm doing. So, the different pellets we're going to be using today. We've got RWS Superfields, Air Arms Field, Diablo, FX pellets and JXB exact pellets. Now, majority of these are, people would say they're exactly the same, uh, just with different names, but there are slight differences, and I've been reliably informed uh, by people that, especially the RWS Superfield, when they come out of the pellet die, uh, they have a slightly different process uh, at the end of the actual process of making the, the pellets, and it just makes them a little bit better. Now, also to make them different, these RWS Superfields, I've got these in 4.51 uh, size. The Diablos here, Air Arms, and the FX are both at 4.52 millimeters, and the JSB Exacts are at 4.53 millimeter. So, four different brands of pellets with three different sizes. Uh, and what I intend to do is use my digital scale here, which I'll show you now when it turns on. A digital scale, I'm going to weigh five pellets from each tin, uh, so make sure they're not only uh, perfectly formed, but also they're the correct size, every pellet. Uh, each brand uh, shot from the five pellets will be charged, the rifle will be charged back up to 230 bar. Also give the people on the hunting life forum a good answer 
uh, and something to try in their own rifles to solve. So without further ado, let's get on to do some pellet weighing. Here's a close up then of the actual tench regulator, what Phil 8282 is fitted. And you can see there, it's the bit what looks about, probably about an inch, just over an inch in length. Uh, and it's between the actual action of the rifle and the air cylinder. The first brand of pellets I'm going to be weighing today with the digital scales are the RWS Superfield. And if I point now with my pen, hopefully you can see that the manufacturers had printed on the tin uh, that the average weight of the pellets in the tin are 0 0.54 of a gram in weight or 8.4 grain in weight. I'll just zoom out slightly now and explain to you that not every pellet in the tin is going to be bang on them figures, what the manufacturer states. It's just an average. So I'm going to allow myself one digit each side. So 0 0.53, 0 0.54 or 0 0.55 of a gram because we're using grams today. So I'm randomly now going to pick five pellets. Uh, make sure they're correctly formed and place them on. This one's 0 0.55, so that's within. So I'll put this at the top. That's one. Zero point five three exactly within again. Pellet three zero point five five within again. Number four bang on what the manufacturer says. And I'll just flicker in within one digit. And the last one randomly out of the tin. 0 0.55, 0 0.54, flicking, finishing on 0 0.55, so within one digit of what the manufacturer said. And as I said before, the RWS Superfield are a really good pellet, and you can see now that within one decimal place, uh, or one digit of actually the manufacturer's average, uh, so that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, and you don't get many uh, dis uh, out of formed shaped pellets, uh, they're usually perfect, and like I say, you've got quite a uh, an accurate figure there, seeing as, seeing as you just see me then randomly pick them out of the tin. What I'm going to do now though is uh, do that for the Air Arms Fields, the FX Pellets and the JSB Exacts uh, on all the different weights. Uh, pick five pellets within one digit of each other and I'm going to put them in a little pot. Now the pots I've got a little plastic beaker here uh, and I've wrote on this one RWS Superfield point. Uh, a 5.1 millimeter, so I know what which ones they are uh, and when I've got four lots of these for the different brands these are the ones I'm going to be shooting actually for the test and the uh, uh, in the indoor range so the next thing you're going to see is in the indoor range at work uh, and we'll be shooting the groups Let's see how I get 
I'll now zoom in to the 27 yard part on the range. And the first shot is going to be an unsorted pellet and it's just to mark where the rest of the group is going to be shot. Okay, now picking one of the sorted and weighed IWS super fields and that pellet mark is going to be in my point of aim. They're not doing too bad, I think the last three have gone uh, through the same arm and the last one. And that's five. Uh, looking through the scope, I can see that just to the uh, left hand side of the uh, original pellet mark, which is my point of aim, I've got a one hole group. Uh, I'll now zoom out and we'll walk up to the uh, target end uh, and we'll just have a look uh, see how we've got on with that brand of pellets This is the camera now set up at the target end and if I zoom in a little bit uh, with the camera we get a nice full picture you'll see that I've already marked on the card this shot here for point with a pen uh, was the initial marking shot uh, and like I've already said this rifle is not zero to any particular brand of pellet at the moment so that was my marking shot and I kept that same point of aim for the other five shots all of the five shots fell in this little area here uh, and to give you some reference how small this group is because I'm quite uh, pleased with it especially that it's only a 4.51 millimeter pellet uh, I can actually cover the marking shot and the group with a five pence piece quite easily now if I was to cover the marking shot and put the five pence piece at the side of it like this you can see it's under half the size of a five pence piece so basically we've got five shots falling into this little group here uh, which is pretty amazing shooting right I've recleaned the barrel now on the ultra and I've reloaded it with 20 pellets from the air arms field 4.52 millimeter brand uh, and I'm just going to take one pellet now from the tin and use it as my marking shot. It's my marking shot, and now the five sorted pellets at the same pellet hole. These are the pellets I have been using and Laura's been using uh, in the rifle before it was regulated. Uh, as you can see, the uh, 4.52 millimeter is suited by this barrel uh, and it's making a one hole group. We're actually going just about uh, through the same hole, less for the tiniest bit of rip. And one more. Uh, 
Hopefully I won't spoil the group. And there we go. Uh, I'll zoom out. And that's actually all six shots now in the same hole. So the marker and the five. I'll zoom out and then we'll go and take a closer look at the group size. Now this is me down at the target end now uh, with the Air Arms Field target and I'm just going to zoom in again so we get a nice uh, full picture again uh, and show you this group. This is shot like I said with the Air Arms Field at 4.52 and these are the pellets I've been using so far uh, with the BSA Ultra. What you can see this time is this was the initial marking shot which was in the middle uh, and plus five other shots from the weighed and sorted pellets. Uh, and to give you some reference again, how small this group is, UK five pence peas absolutely murders all six shots there. Uh, and if I put it at the side of it, you can see it yet again, all six shots are probably under the diameter of half the five pence peas quite easily. Uh, and to be honest, I think I could have actually carried on shooting at this same spot, this same group, and made it a 10, gr uh, ten shot group uh, with hardly making uh, the diameter of that group any bigger. Very, very accurate. So as you can see so far, with the Air, uh, RDBS Superfields at 4.51 and these at 4.52, both giving really tight groups, uh, the Ultra Barrel is not very fussy. Uh, so you've got two pellet brands straight away. If you're thinking of buying an Ultra and wanting to know what is a good starting pellet to try, uh, to actually look at the RDBS Superfield and the Air Arms Field. We're now going to try the FX pellet and then the JSB Exact. I'm now ready again, I'm going to zoom in and this time we're going to shoot the group with the FX pellet. So to start with, I'll just use one random pellet, which is not weighed or sorted out the tin and use as my marking chart. These are also at 4.52mm. These are impacting slightly higher than the point of aim. The two's just gone, or the second one's just gone through the first ones. Uh, oh no. And the final one. And they two have also made quite a decent group. Zoom out again and we'll go and have a look. Okay, back at the target end. I'll just zoom in again. Get a nice full picture. Uh, and use my marker again on my point I should say of the pen. Initial shot was the lowest one here and as I said uh, the pellets are actually impacting uh, slightly higher than the other uh, or the last batch of pellets. So the initial shot is here and then we've got five shots in this area here. To give you some reference again I'll just use the five pence piece and as you can see it actually covers all six shots quite easily uh, and if I was to take away the initial shot Yet again, it's probably about the same group size as the RDS Superfield. Right then, I'll zoom in. This is the last batch. Take one from the tin. JSB uh, exact 4.53 millimeter. Marking shot first.
Right, now the five sorted and weighed. Believe it or not, the first two have just gone through the same hole as the marking shot. That's three gone through the same hole. I think there's the slightest bit of the card tear. That's only the slightest bit so far. Same again, let's see if I can get uh, five in this tiny little cluster. Which I have, and I've got to say, uh, I've never actually tried these 4.53 millimeter pellets in this Ultra. And that's probably one of the best groups I've ever shot at this range with this rifle. Uh, and it's just an absolute credit to Phil 8282 from Gunting Live Forum and for BSA itself for making such an excellent rifle. It just goes to show, and we'll have a look at this group in a minute, I think uh, you're going to be pretty impressed uh, that for a rifle, at, you know, between three and four hundred pounds, it can produce accuracy and results like this. Uh, this is bordering on what you'd expect to get from a rifle at twelve hundred pounds. Right, I'll zoom out. We're now back down at the target end and I'll just zoom in so we're going to get a nice full picture and this is the final group which we shot with the JSB Exacts at 4.53 millimetres. Now if I use my pen as a pointer you'll note that there's a little blue line around this part of the card here. This is denoting where the first pellet was so the initial marking shot was this one here. All of the five shots went through this tiny area here. Uh, to give you some reference before I use the five pence piece on actually how small that hole is, I've actually put a little tiny bit of blue tack on the head of a new uh, 177 pellet what's not been fired. And the reason I put blue tack on because my fingers are in the way if I try. And I'm going to try and stick it uh, actually on the card. And as you can see, if I try and straighten it up a little bit better for the camera for you, like so, the actual 177 pellet is the diameter of the hole. So five shots went through the same hole, really, without making it uh, any more than probably half a millimetre or a quarter of a millimetre at maximum uh, bigger. And like I say, that is pretty amazing and outstanding uh, results you're getting from this Ultra. And that sort of thing I would expect if I was paying £1,200 for a Daystate Airwolf. Uh, and this is coming from a £300 rifle, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, just to give you some reference again, uh, with a five pence piece, I'll stick it on there like so. And as you can imagine, it absolutely nails uh, the five pence piece. Side by side of the whole six group, that six shot group. And if I was, yet again, to take away the first bit, you can see it's not even a quarter of a size uh, of a five pence piece. That is so small, it's unbelievable. I'll just try and stick it back on again. You can see five shots through the same hole, 27 yards. So from now on, I think I know which pellet uh, I'll be using in this barrel uh, and Laura will be using for HFT. Well that's all four brands now fired through the Ultra and as you saw from the results all four brands grouped under the size of a five pence piece diameter quite easily and all four brands could be used in the field for hunting or HFT and you'd get great results. It just goes to show uh, that the BSA barrel uh, is not pellet fussy at all uh, and you can use a great array of quality pellets and get good results. As always though there's one clear winner and in this case it was the wider diameter JSB exacts at 4.53 millimetres and as I said in the caption earlier on 
BSA barrels are notorious uh, for liking a wider pellet. My R10 also liked a bit of a wider pellet, and I used to, and it was 22 caliber, and I used to use 5.52 millimeter uh, in the R10. Speaking of results, uh, the results I got with these JSB exact pellets uh, can't be bettered. And the reason I say that, you can't be putting five pellets through the same hole. There's no way on earth it can be beaten. So with a 300 pound rifle and an 80 pound scope, I'm gaining results that I'd expect to gain from a 1200 pound rifle at uh, 27 yards. Absolutely phenomenal. So if anyone who's thinking of buying one of these rifles, uh, you've seen how accurate they can be. Uh, you've seen how good the regulator is. And now you know how many shots you're looking at getting. Around about 70 from 230 bar fill. Uh, speak to either Phil8282 from the Hunting Life Forum, who uh, is in the Avon section a lot, or try contacting Simon Alth, better known as Tench, on the BSA Owners Forum, uh, and they'll be able to put you in the right direction and give you all the information about getting one of these regulators fitted. So, from me and Davey, look out for future productions on Vermin Hunters TV. We've got a night hunting section uh, coming up sh shortly using nighthunter.com new night vision. And it, we're going to be using the Digi Spotter and the Digi Add-on, and it's set to blow your mind. The stuff we we're using uh, is straight to the art, and it's only just designed. It's not even actually on the market yet, and we're going to get to test that hopefully within the next two or three weeks. So, if you're into uh, nature watching at night, are you watching badgers or owls? Or you're in the military and you want a bit of covert surveillance equipment, or you just like to be shooting out at night. Uh, with night vision equipment and yourself instead of using a lamp, stay tuned and watch within the next few weeks. So, bye for now, stay safe, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.